think I want to share today something God gave me. Um, um, let's, let's go to Isaiah 58 and 12. Let's start here. I have an interesting subject that was given to me, and I'm going to give it to you the way God wanted me to share it. And so um, we're, we're talking about some of the things that need to be rebuilt, repaired, restored. And so I want to talk to you a little bit about there's a hole in the wall. And so um, Isaiah 58 and 12, let's start here. And they that shall be of thee shall build the old waste places. Thou shall raise up the foundations of many generations, and thou shall be called the repairer of the breach, the restorer of paths, paths to dwell in. Now let's read it from the Message Bible. It says, if you get rid of unfair practices, quit blaming Quit blaming victims. Quit gossiping about other people's sin. If you are generous with the hungry and start giving yourselves to the down and out, your lives will begin to glow in the darkness. Your life will begin to glow in the darkness. Hello, glory carriers. Hello, those that God is awakening in the dark to become larger measures of light. Dark is going nowhere. I don't care how much you pray. Dark was in the beginning. As a matter of fact, we believe that God does not reside and manage and control and direct dark. When we think of dark, we think of everything dark has to be evil. But the Lord taught me this years ago. He said, let me tell you something. And this is how many people are going to get deceived because they don't understand that dark is a dimmer measure of light. That's why the moon is shining in the night. That's why the sun is in the day. Why? It rays and what its job has been given by God to do as the sun is to bring a greater light in the day. The moon is a light, but its job is to bring a lesser light in the night. And what we are finding ourselves in life becoming is that we are losing our way because we've sat in the day of dimness. Because we're in dim days where lights are going out. People are losing the brightness of their day. They are losing the, the fact that God is saying, when it gets light, when it gets dark, that's when you turn up your light. If you walked into a room and you're trying to see, the first thing you do is hit the light switch. Because if you walked into a room where there is no light, doesn't mean that light is not there. It doesn't mean that light doesn't have the potential to come on. It means that you've not found where the switch was and turned it on. Because dark is in this room. If we turn off all the lights, it'll be dark. The only reason why it's not dark is because there's light that has been identified to be turned up that causes us to see at a different measure. So what God is trying to do, he's trying to recalibrate eyes because I believe we're living in a time as we talk about repairing the breach. As he says, when you get these things out of you, he says, start giving yourself to the down and out. He says, your lives will begin to glow. In the darkness. Why? Because you are doing something that is not done in the norm of what you're living in. That's how you're able to attract something different. Because you're able not to register something that is not registered where you are. People begin to draw. He said they're going to draw to your light. They're going to come to the dawning of who you are. Merchants are going to find you. People are looking for you. You are the gates. You're the portals. Why? And if you don't shine your light, they will never be able to find you because you're blending in with everything else that's dim. And he's saying, but I need you to understand that we are in legal days of darkness. It's been announced from heaven. This is what we sometimes don't get because when God said increase, everything is increasing instead of including hell. I'm going to say that again. When, when we begin to get prophetic announcements, we're missing it. Y'all looking at me like a deer with headlights. Am I going too fast? Because I need y'all to get this honest to God. We don't have a lot of time. Okay? And I'm just not playing no more. I'm, I'm not on just, just old, older. I've just been sitting in so many things so long trying to teach a church-minded people the kingdom principles of heaven. And we just don't want to become kingdom because we get our feelings hurt. This is not about getting your feelings hurt. This is about you paying money, registering for something to come here because God is trying to pour something in you because you showed up like you was ready. Don't be the fig tree. Jesus, help me, Lord. 
let me help me, Lord. Don't be clinging brass. Don't be empty vessels. We don't have a lot of time. And we have to be able to be mature enough now to receive meat. Get some teeth and chew. No longer will you sit saying, what they, what they talking about? What, huh, what she said? I ain't never heard that word. Get you a concordance. Get you a Bible. We have material. Buy my book. They have things that they've written in all the instructions and schools and training. We got too much knowledge. We can press a button and get information. You can find out how to cook and do recipes and go all over the world. Why aren't you studying? Why aren't you sitting in the presence of God so you can become effective in the hour of dark? This is what you were here. This is why you keep waking up. You know the only reason why you're here right now in this dispensation? We're already moving into a new era. 2025, the Lord told me the other day, he says, I was in a dream. I got to go on and talk about this. So y'all check me out live on, you, on, 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 on Instagram. I don't go on this stuff unless God really tells me because I understand frequencies. I understand algorithms. I understand that they're picking up everything we say. And I understand that they're down, should I say, they are uploading it in an entity called AI so it can replace you. And so for me, I'm very careful about what I say in spaces. I'm not irresponsible. I've been teaching in the prophetic. I started the first prophetic school in Boca in 2006. So for teaching in the prophetic, I was leading out doing this stuff. You know Brenda shaking her head. She was there. I mean, so many years ago. That people, the few that could find the ones that could come. And I started in tenses, And it was back to back. It was just like this. We took chairs. We sat in there. We had students. We had manuals. We had books. And I was trying to give people terminology to teach them how to war and how to position themselves in dimensions of the spirit. Sometimes you're praying and you're not qualified. Because you don't even understand. If you don't understand word, when you're trying to change a nation, the first thing you do is change the language. Some of us are still using an old wineskin language trying to take on new, y'all trying to do new modernized things in the earth. You're going to have to change your language. And so, well, what does that mean? Well, pastor so-and-so, I don't know what pastor so-and-so said. I don't know what bishop so I don't know what they said. But it's a new day and you're going to have to get some new wineskin with some new language. We're dealing with an intelligence out of hell. These demons are ancient. They are ancient. Listen to me. They are ancient spirits. You are not just dealing with imps no more. You're dealing with ruling powers and principalities. And so it's important for you to understand as apostolic people. And can I just put a plug here? I don't even know why I'm here. But I'm going to tell you as apostolic people, it is important for you to understand that apostolic doesn't mean we need you to become an apostle. It's, it's, this, this, this stuff got to stop because we are misrepresenting the office. We are misrepresenting what it is to be a prophet or an apostle. These are two, these are who God raised up to be military strategists. If you can't handle what we have to take on, you should not put on this title because you're going to draw some things to your door. That you are not even ready. You're not equipped. You've not been upgraded. You didn't even get the letter that someone sent to you to tell you to come into this militaristic school so you can learn how to defend and guard and govern in this heightened time of war. So I know it looks like it's empowering. I know when we talk, I know, it look, oh, she's so old, whatever, whatever. I know it looks like that, but it didn't happen overnight. So I'm just telling you, when people want to now, when we say apostolic, and this is one of my concerns, Apostle Brenda, I'm all over the place. Y'all bear with me because I got a lot to talk about. But I'm going to get to this. We're, getting, we're having to deal with this. We're talking about, I'm an apostle. I'm an apostle. Every time God was awakening mantles because of job assignments and the dispensation that was being fulfilled in out of heaven and time. He was awaking it for its mandate for what God was doing in the earth concerning people, humanity. And when we got to, we saw the awakening, we saw the evangelist, he had to go get souls first. So we saw evangelists be, everybody was an evangelist. Y'all know everybody, everybody who did whatever, they was called evangelists, evangelists, evangelists. They weren't even soul winners, but they were called evangelists because we were able to recognize that you know, we need to give you a title. And the only thing we can handle right now is that evangelist. That's why everything became missional. 
And that all came out, <laughs> that all came out of how we see the Catholic Church establish some things. They remove apostles so that they can control and regulate the spiritual realms. This ain't nothing new. We stopped. We shut down prophets in the first century. You understand that was happening all, all English. They were shutting down. This goes all the way back. You talk about Abraham. You talk about those who was dealing with the organized structures of systems they put in place that was prophets. This is not new. We are the continuum of something that was happening out of eternity. Ain't nobody talking about I'm the first prophet that said this. No, go read your word. You are not the first prophet that said anything if you're living in 2024. You are the continuum and the voice that is still saying what was already written to say it from the apostles and prophets that wrote the Bible, that God gave the instructions to, that we line up and come into oneness and we begin to speak it to the language of our tribes, our nations, come on, our time period, that they don't miss the connection of what God said out of, out of heaven centuries, decades before we got here that we are able to be the continuum until it's all fulfilled. So, so, so when we say apostle, you don't have to be an apostle to be apostolic. You don't have to be a prophet to be prophetic. It is spiritual realms, it is dimensions. When we say, people say, you know you're prophetic. Oh, they saying I'm a prophet. No, we're saying you are probably able to access spiritual realms. You can be a strong intercessor, but everybody should be prophetic. Why? Because it's a spiritual and supernatural realm. And the whole church should be operating out of this spiritual and supernatural realm. When we say you're apostolic, he awakened evangelists, got souls, then he had to get some shepherds. Then he started awakening the shepherds. Then we saw strong lording over people with the shepherds, right? Then we go from that mantle being awakening because we just don't know. And then we go from that. Then we start seeing teachers. Here come word of faith. Everybody teaching. We got so much teaching that we shut down the moves of the spirit because we was trying to get people taught because they were so ignorant. So now we get taught. But God is awakening mantles because he's bringing us into fullness. And you can't come into fullness until you establish the, the main two. That is the militaristic warriors of the kingdom are prophets and apostles. And so then he started awakening apostles, prophets. Everybody was a prophet. If you want to look at the 90s and the 80s, everybody was a prophet. We do the same thing. And then when he started awakening apostles, you start putting your title out there, I'm an apostle. We are attracted to what is appealing in our soul to try to fill a void in our identity that we want. Go sit with God to get filled. And so we take on titles. We take on things that is other people's assignment simply because we like how I look. I can look at somebody's shoes and say I like them, but I can't fit them. But we'll go get the shoe and say, I just like it. We'll cover it, put it in our closet, can't never wear it. I just want it. Why? Because there's something in my soul that has a hole in it. And I'm trying to not feel this in my soul by taking off of what's yours that's not mine at all. But then I'm going to say they are mine and God never gave them to me. Are y'all hearing me so far? So it's important, I believe, in this hour as we talk about manding gates. See, all of this is government. I'm, let me hurry up. What, how much time I have? All of this is government. And so if we don't understand government when we talk about apostolic or apostleship, we must get the church, church, to come into the oneness of understanding that we are building up under apostleship. Why apostleship? Because that's what God left in place. And he trusted only apostles and not only just when we talk about apostles, these are God's like uh, uh, the highest councils that, be, that are able to sit and judge because they've been measured with something else. Okay, and so God give them different type of tools. But when we start talking about apostleship, we're talking about people who can gather up under the instructions and the mandate of what God gives to those who are government officials at the highest rank that they can disseminate and bring people into proper rank and proper awakening of position that we come together. Why? Because we have to take on citywide assignments, nationwide assignments, whatever is global assignments, depending on the job uh, that God has given to whomever he put at the place to lead in something. Doesn't mean we're better. He just trusts somebody to take on the assignment because somewhere he, they have proven and God put in them that I know you're not going to back down. Because people, some people now you say, boo, they gone. They gone. 
They can't handle this warfare day. They can't handle it. We seeing lions, tigers, and bears. Oh, my. And so people are dropping like flies. Boom. I'm out of here. Out of here. Out of here. But God is allowing it because he's actually bringing forth a remnant, right? He's actually bringing forth a bride. He's actually qualifying these apostolic warriors to say they are the only ones I trust to take my government and bring that into the earth because they have shoulders to bear. They can hand apostles at the bottom, and so we, we understand all of that because people stand upon them, but that's not what I'm talking about anyway. But I had to say that because if we're going to be in this time that we're in right now, he's telling you, look, when you read the Bible, you got to read it to know that God is telling you plainly. Like sometimes we, people talk to you, and you kind of say, well, well, I, well I'm, I'm, I think you're saying this. Why? We got to rearrange what people say because we can't handle it. Emotionally, we are not mature enough to handle the high-level thoughts, the high-level conversations. And if you don't work on your emotional quote, then you're going to crash. I don't care how many sessions you sit in. You get all this knowledge. We have information coming out of the bazooka. But we don't have the emotional capacity to handle all the knowledge we're getting. And the devil is wearing you out in your soul. The devil is trying to cause people to crash because we keep trying to get some more knowledge, some more information, because the world taught us that we need to develop our IQ. But we're not developing our EQ. And if we don't develop our EQ, we can't handle the AQ. Come on, the adversity. Every time you are sending, we at gates. Come on, we're going to get this, and we're prophesying. You're going to take, and you're going to do. Every time you are sending, you need to go sit in the place, in the closet with God, and start working in your soul. Why? Because it's going to require you to die some more. It's going to require, uh, people prophesy to me all that. Say, listen, I'm every day, I'm like, God, can you call somebody else? I'm just a woman trying to tell my husband to do it. He said, no, I called you because God ain't into gender. And he knew I'm a warrior. Maybe the projects taught me that. I don't know. But I was this little orphan girl. I was, I was, I was without mother and father. I had adopted parents, but they died when I was young. And when I met my a biological mother, by then I'm 30. I, I think I was 36 when I met her. Jesus, I don't have no time. Okay. Anyway. But I, 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 all of that. Okay. So he says this in Isaiah 58. Let's go here. He says, if you get rid, I'm going back to the top. If you get rid of unfair practices. And quit blaming victims and quit gossiping about other people's sin. If you are generous with the hungry and you start giving yourselves, here we go, giving of yourself, giving of yourself. He says, now you got to be generous. Some people stingy. Some people don't want to let go of nothing. And the reason why we can't let go is because we may have abandonment issues in our, in our lives. Abandonment makes you hold on. Every time God requires you to ascend to something that is going to be an elevation. I don't care if it's a promotion on your job. Every time an announcement comes through trouble, through pain, through crisis, in a storm, it's making you come to a place to excel to a higher. It's announcing your promotion. And how you navigate through that storm determines where you're going to be positioned in your next. Because God is not going to give you more to take on when you're, you're, you're crashing. Here, you're crashing. So the first thing you have to do is do that. He says, you got to give of yourself. So I got to let go. He says, you got to give yourself to the down and out. Your lives will begin to glow in darkness. Your shadow lives will be bathed in sunlight. I will always show you where to go. And I'll give you a full life in the emptiest of places. Are y'all hearing that? I I'll give you, no matter how empty it get, no matter how crazy it get, no matter people announcing famines, I'm telling you, God said, if you do this, you're going to have light because you'll be a Goshen. And Goshen is not a place. You're the pl Listen, Goshen is spiritual. It is a dimension of glory that shows up in your life that causes people, devils and demons, and pe when they're coming to people's houses trying to take them out, when viruses are hidden, when we got famines, God said you're going to be sitting in a sweet place. You're going to be in a place called Goshen. Why? Because you have recalibrated your eye to see from a dimension and a speed of glory. This glory that is coming now is not like the former glory. Come on, it's the latter glory. And God is trying to help us understand that when you come into the latter days there is increase it's called greater and the last shall be greater are y'all hearing the word of God he says when you come to the end I load you with double come on I give you more why because I understand that when you come to the end the battle gets greater the things get stronger the things begin to war against you and rage against you he says so I'm gonna load you with a greater equipment and so that's why we start hearing announcements that say double double why because 50 soldiers just they, come on they just got taken out so if you're still standing God said I'm gonna give you everything they could not take on put on their equipment and keep going 
So you have more and more to get things done because mantles are falling. And he'll say, pick up three. I needed stuff to remain in the earth. And if you can handle and you have capacity to take on the mantles of those that are falling to make sure the things in the earth, the gates are legislated at, to make sure this stuff don't drop, to make sure God's administration is still standing. He said, I can give you another mantle because you have capacity. You've done your homework. You built your soul. You made sure you kept dying to you for the benefit is beyond you. It's not about you. We look at ministry and work in ministry, and we look at what we do, and we start looking at life, and we say, somebody call you something. You say, I got something else to do. No, you got something else to die to. Because we see things as doing, and God said, but when I call you, I see you as dying. You got to keep dying because you can't do this in your own strength. You can't do this out of your intelligence. You can't do this, people of God, out of what you went to school. I don't care how many degrees you have intellectualism cannot take on the higher mind of the spirit he said I'll use foolish things represent I'm the foolish to confound the wise. it made no sense the revelation that God gives me and I'm a woman come on and I'm chocolate well I'm Carmel I'm Carmel <laughs> but you can see it's chocolate in there somewhere but it makes no sense why he would have called you you look at your life, you say, how? But he says, I'm going to tell you, I'm going to do this in this hour because I'm registering a glory. This glory is going to cause you to be so hidden. But when we get in this glory that God is releasing now as we come into 25, he said 25 would be a year like no other. He told me this the other day. He said 25 is going to be a year. I was prophesying in a dream vision and I saw, I saw living beings stop. In the, they were in the clouds, peering their head in to hear what I was saying. Villages of people ran out and they was all listening to what I was saying. The glory of God was on me and I was prophesying in the earth to just everything. And God said, tell them 2025 will be a year like no other. He said, judgment shall increase. Get your house in order. And there's more to that. Join me Tuesday on, 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 on live as I share with what God is saying. But that's what you need to know. And so it says this, I will always show you where to go. And I'll give you a full life in the emptiness of places. Firm muscles, strong bones. You will be like a well-watered garden, a gurgling spring that never runs dry. You will use the old rubble of past lives to build anew. Rebuild the foundations from out of your past. Come on, Jesus. What have you been able to come out of? You can only build from what you've been able to conquer. So you cannot confront and contend until you conquer what is in you. Some of us are in the corner, but God says you can't contend. You can't take on gates. You can't deal with demonic powers and ruling things that are happening around the earth, even in your family, around your city, wherever God starts you out. Because he says first Jerusalem. So your first practice is in your house. If you can't deal with managing your children, them little baby, you know, the ones that run all through church. Yeah. You mean you don't have a voice of authority to shut down Jimmy and Shawanda and tell them not in my house. I take authority. You don't have no voice print to shut down the demons of darkness that's trying to mess up your gates in your house. How are you going to man the gates in Orlando? He says, I'm going to prove you in the small, and then I'm going to elevate you and increase you with something greater. But I'm proving you here to see if you can take on something bigger. And when you can't take on your house, when you can't stand in the face of these children and say, the devil is a liar, my children was getting delivered at the kitchen table. I was casting out demons in my children when they were seven. I said, this spirit will not. Because I know if I don't get it when it's young, don't forget it when they start growing up. Demons grow, honey. I'm going to tell you right now. And then when they get older, they begin to gather other spirits with them because they run in groups. Demons are cowards. They need a whole lot of spirits to show up with them. Okay. So God is trying to tell you some things here. I know my time, court. let me know. You'll be known as those who can fix anything. This is what the Bible says. Why? Because you learn how to fix you. My God, everything he was ever going to do, he already put the model in the earth. It's called you. Somebody say he was talking about me. He said, you'll be known as those who can fix anything, restore all ruins, rebuild, re -ren um, renovate, make the community livable again. Again. 
So walls was used to give people safety who lived in the city. Wherever there was a, whenever there was a hole or an opening, everyone in the city was in danger of the enemy coming in to destroy them. So what is a breach? What is a breach? It's a gap. A breach is an opening in the wall. It's a break. It's a split. It's a rupture. It's a crack. It's a fracture. It's a riff. A, a, a breach is a violation. And then you go on and it says it's a transgression. It's a neglect. We don't even understand how we got breaches in our soul. You're neglecting your prayer time. You're neglecting your soul care. You're neglecting your time in the presence of God. It's a transgression. It's an infringement. And it is when you fail to observe. Are you paying attention to what is happening? Because if you don't, it can cause a breach in the wall. So sin is a breach because it separates us from the agreement or the covenant with the Father. It separates us. I'm going to kind of go a little bit because I'm in my time. Sin, so sin is a breach. And so when we understand agreement and covenant, we keep talking about covenant. But I'm concerned that people don't understand what God is saying as he talk about covenant. Because uh, covenant people are really the ones that God is talking about when he say remnant. Covenant people, see, we have interchangeable words, but God is very clear. You know, it's like homonyms. You can say the same word, but they have different meanings. Like when we say prophetic and people think we're talking about prophets, no, we're talking about a spiritual realm. Prophets are an office. What is that now? My time keeps going. No, you're watching the clock, right? Okay. So, so this is what it says. So covenant is when we come out of agreement, we come out of covenant, we breach the contract. Okay, with God. And it comes to things of sin where you're choosing something outside of what is legal in the contract you've signed. God is very clear. He gives you a Bible. It's the Constitution. The Constitution, he said, put it on your heart so that you don't breach it. And so he's trying to help you understand that covenant people are really partners. They are people who have made an agreement to sit in the think tank of heaven and be in the same mind frame of God. They do not come out of agreement with whatever he said. So they say whatever he said, that's what we do. And so when we're looking for pe people are chasing after blessings and they're leaving the covenant. And this is what happened in Israel when we saw the battle that took place through these two brothers. It was an announcement that came to the nations. And when you hear things that are happening in nations and it's announced out of Israel, hear ye, O Israel. We're missing it. We're in days where we're going to see brother against brother like never before. Persecution is coming like never. I'm going to just run this down. It's a lot of stuff that is being announced. Texas is announcing stuff, but it was announcing it had to be in Texas. Why? Because it was three. We saw three main leaders. Why? Because God is making an announcement to America. And why not do it out of Texas? Texas is the core of what this, is, this nation, a lot of times that it was established out of, that we see these patri patriots, what they call patriots. And so what, what God is announcing, these are major prophetic change signals and announcements. And so this is when you're seeing this, guys, and when you're watching things that are unfolding, you got to know as those who are gatekeepers, who are manding different posts, what is God saying? What is he turning up? What is being announced? What does that mean on your watch? You got to know what he's saying because people left blessings, I mean covenant, and they went after blessings. Why? Because the blessings fall on the just and the unjust. But the covenant don't just give you blessings. Don't just give you blessings. It gives you God's protection and his presence. Because God is with you and stuff. There are some people that have blessings that God ain't with. And so we start chasing after what looks like, it looks like it has a form of success. It has a form of contentment. It has a form because anything that did not come out of the DNA of the seed of Christ does not have the legitimacy. It, it doesn't house the fullness. So it won't keep you. Eventually, the shoes are going to weigh out. The roof going to fall off. Eventually, I don't care what you get. If it was not seeded out of Christ, then it will not last. Okay, so let's go. So scriptures say, how can two walk together unless they are in agreement, right? What leaves an opening in the wall is disagreement, guys. When you have strongholds in your life that rules over your spirit, it has been a breach. It has been a breach. It has been a breach. So strongholds, when you have them in your life and they rule over your spirit, these are the things that cause breach. Okay, Isaiah 58 and 12 is talking about it. It is saying that when you allow God to process and repair the emotional damage issues of your soul, you become qualified to repair the gates of your city. 
okay? So God is looking for those who can make up the hedge, repairers of the breach, those who restore the right way, can bring things back to the original purpose, can, can cause things to be now, uh, uh, look like, again, the way God put it in place to look. And so we're talking about that because when you start looking at that, a lot of times we're looking at the physical quality of uh, phys the physical nature of what we are trying to get people to see. And God is saying the first place you got to start doing the work is in the spirit. Because if people can't see, they won't see. Okay, I got to hurry up. Okay. So, so, so he's trying to tell you guys that uh, until you get your eyes, you can't even put back in place because it's moving at a different speed. And so you want everything slowed down in the earth in order for us to be able to physically see it as we've been transacting business from the heavens into the earth. God slows it down to materialize it because it needed to land and be still in the earth. So he slows down. It's not moving. We got protons, neutrons, atoms. We got all of these things that are happening and things that are moving in this room right now. And the only reason why it's been put together where you can see it is because it needed to materialize to have substance so you can be able to handle it on the earth. Adam ruled on the earth. And when God woke up Adam, he was giving him consciousness. He woke up the nephesh. He breathed his spirit. But what I come to find out that God told me, it wasn't just to be able to have the intelligence that we have in our human nature. Because we have wisdom, human wisdom. We have human intelligence. But he needed more than that. And so when the serpent showed up in the garden, this is what took place. When the serpent showed up, he was a spirit that understood sound. He sat in the intelligence of heaven. He understood the language of God. He was teaching humanity how to violate, how to become now where you were able to cross-pollinate. He was teaching people to break all the, the uh, breach. He was teaching people then. The breach came a long time ago. He was teaching people, humanity, how to breach every contract of agreement they could ever have by seeding a thought that would bring a disagreement. So when God showed up, the first thing man do in a fallen state is when he says you are healed, we start saying that can't be possible. And so we start listening to what earth says and we stop listening to what heaven says because we left the sound of heaven. We fell to a first dimension in the earth and we pick up the sound frequency from a fallen place. So what you are living out of is information and you left revelation. And so... God is trying to bring you to a place where your mind get recalibrated and elevated through this light because this illuminated light caused you to see things in the earth that you could have never seen. And that's why we're in a time of exposure because this light is about to expose things, not just against people, but expose things to you. You couldn't see until this measure of glory came. So God is about to expose your wealth. God, we're in transference. God is about to expose your wealth. He's about to expose you into a lineage of things that you left that you didn't even know that was owed you. He's said, I'm going to expose you to people. I'm going to expose you into places where you thought you could never gone in, but the light has come. And this light and this glory and this frequency is about to set you in a place where I'm introducing you. All you got to do is get back into repairing the breach. Why are we in disagreement? The Bible says that that, that, that woman, he talks about Genesis 3 and 15. He says that that woman, he says, I'm telling you I made a promise in Genesis 3 and 15. What comes out of her is going to bruise his head. Jesus was talking about when you see this last Adam comes along he comes along he says why because there has to be a seed why because the first Adam wasn't a seed and the only reason why the first Adam was able to be deceived because he was a replica we got too many replicas walking around here they have a form of godliness but they don't house power because there's no blood oh y'all better hear me we got people that are living a breach life every day saying that they are in covenant with God, but they're only hanging around to get the blessings. And so he's telling us as the last Adam comes along, the first Adam couldn't finish it. And this is my issue. I got to go. I don't have a lot of time. But this is one of the things I want to say with you guys to sit in this and think about. If the first Adam comes along and the Bible says he took some dirt from the earth and he breathed. And anything God breathes on is awakened. He awakens him to a consciousness and give him an intelligence to be able to man and manage everything on the earth. But he had not come into a seated place to take on. Say, oh my God. He had not been given the seed. He was not the seed because he did not go through the process of the blood. Okay, let's, let's, let's go here. 
If the first Adam was a replica, this is how you're going to know people who are broken the breach. This is how you're going to know. I don't even know. I'm my time. I'm wrapping this up. This is how you're going to know people who have broken a breach. They are not covenant people. They are not kingdom. The Lord said to me, if people don't speak this language, don't trust them. Why? Because they are breach. They are breakers of breaches. In other words, they are replicas. They are people walking around that are using his language or using terminology, but they don't even have the same mind. Because they're not interested in recovering people, recovering cities, bringing things back to the place that God wants it. You mean you don't have nothing in you that you want to get a bag and feed somebody? You mean you don't have nothing in you? You know, you don't see that there's a need to clean the bathroom? You mean you're doing everything you do in life, you show up just for you? You're not a covenant person. You're not a glory carrier. You are a breaker of the breach. God made a covenant with his people. And I'm going to tell you how we're going to know covenant people because they're showing up in the DNA in God. I don't have to make you come to rehearsal I don't have to get you out the bed beg you to come and pray if you covenant then be covenant if you are not then we identify that you are a breach in the wall you are causing things to come into the earth you are not manding gates you're opening there is a hole in the wall so then you got I, I see who you, I see you peekaboo I see you and so we got folks, if we go back here, and I'm finishing, if we go back here, here, court, I can't even go no further. This is going to mess me up. It'll take me too long. Here, let me, let me close this out. I don't know. That. We got people, I'm going to close out right here. We got people that if we look at what happened with Adam, and he said, I took him, and insemination is not anything new. Everything that is happening now came out of the technologies of heaven. There is nothing new under the sun. We are living in a time where we are seeing the unveiling, or should we say out of a kairos into a chronos. We're living and we're feeling the pressure because we're coming to the end of kairos, which is when God closes out dispensational eras. So that means that economies, dispensation deals with commerce, trade, economy. So think it not strange that we start dealing with all of these things because it's governmental. It's closing the books. And so God is closing the books, but before he closed them out, he's remembering you. So it's like Esther when he went to King King. Did I ever give her, did I ever, you're about to see things show up in your life, covenant people. I'm only, us covenant people. Don't get mad, just get covenant. Get mad, Pastor Terry. Don't, don't look at the blessings on us in the times of darkness. Uh-uh. Just get covenant because you will be in the ark too. The covenant is an ark. It's an ark. It has nothing to do with a boat. It was a contract of agreement. And if you breached it, then you're going to find yourself outside in this hour not having the provision you need, the protection you need, because you were chasing after blessings. You left and went after the gold and left the glory. And so we're in this time period now where we're getting ready to see from the first Adam that when Adam came along, Adam now is a replica. Did you know that Mary, how she got pregnant? Did Joseph and her get together? No. Okay. There's a lot of babies being born that did not come through the seed form of connection with a man and a woman. Right? They call it artificial what? Anything artificial is not what? It's not real. It's not organic. Artificial didn't just start because AI been announced in an era. I don't know why millennials and the Z generation believe that they are part of something. So, no, if it wasn't for the boomers and the ones that went before that. And are we, are, we, are, we are one. We are one. Man start breaking us down with, you know, your time period and your zodiac and, you know, you're born at this time. He's seeding, He's seeding a thought in you to be a breach He's seeding a thought in you to break covenant because it's not what the word says. So Adam comes along and Adam now is a replica and he says, now nah, replicas cannot do what seeded people can. And so a Adam does not have, the first Adam does not have in him anything that the Bible says he prophesied in Genesis 3 and 15. He made a prophetic promise in the beginning what was going to happen. And he said, this is what's going to come. He said, um, I'm going to use her. What comes out of her? Let me just wrap up this thought and I'm going to sit down. What comes out of her? Who is her? 
Why does he call the church uh, his bride? What? What? He's telling y'all what comes out of her. This what comes out of her is going to bruise his heel. He's saying going to take out his head. So in other words, this that comes out of her, who came out of her? Christ. Christ came out of the woman. Right? And so he says, when you see this seed, this seed is housing something different. It's been engineered. It's been coded to take down the algorithms that are dysfunctioning. These are patterns that have set itself out of the rhythm of heaven. He says, but when this seed comes along, they're going to be in such sync with who I am because they are the seed of me. They're not people that got an echo of what I said. They sit in my presence. They have breath-to-breath -breath conversations because not only are they breath, but they came through the process of blood. So you don't just need breath, which is intelligence, which is spirit. You need blood. And blood is what we are missing. God said, I'm looking for bloody priests. We got too many priests that ain't bloody no more. People not under the blood. I know you're not under the blood because the blood rebukes you. I don't have to rebuke you. If you're in the blood, the blood rebukes you. The blood makes you shut your mouth. The blood tells you you're not in agreement with God. The blood tells you you're outside of the covenant. Why do I have to deal with this? He says, I'm going to cause hostility. The Bible says enmity that will come against the seed of the devil and the seed of mine. Why, if we are in covenant, we got so much hostility going on? Y'all better hear me. Why in the world? You better check seed. You better check documents. We are in a time legally. That people are lurking in dark. They're hiding in dimness. Until you turn up your light. And you can't deal with it until you get your soul in order. You can't deal with the repairer. You can't repair the breach. You can be in prayer from the time the sun come up and down. We ain't moving nothing. Sick of looking at the faces of people who saying we have prayer. What time are we going? And I ain't never seen a prayerless, prophetic company like I see now. I don't even know what this is. You got to beg prophets to pray. You ain't the covenant. You are a replica. You walking around here with a title, but you don't have the blood on your life. Because if you had the blood on your life, I wouldn't have to call you to intercessory prayer. You are prayer in the city. You, are, you show up. You are the gate. You show up. Everywhere you walk, you're in communion with God. Why are we begging you to get up and pray? Oh, you prophet. Oh, you apostle. Oh, you fivefold leader. Why? Why are you warring with me? I'm not your enemy. There's only two enemies. One is of the seed of hell and one is of the seed of God. He says that's the place where enmity, hostility. I'm going back and forth with you. The devil just sold it into you. Here we back to this garden. The enemy sold into her. He wanted to disrupt the rhythm of heaven and the earth. He sold it a thought. That fruit is what was produced out of her life after she stayed in conversation so long talking with another illegal spirit. Because sometimes we're entertaining spirits. He said, you can entertain. The Bible says he shows up as an angel of light. Don't tell me dark don't have light. It's just so dim. Your eyes are so registered low because you have so much dysfunctional things in your soul that keeps us bound. It's so we got so much flesh. I'm smelling flesh, y'all. I'm telling y'all like I've never smelled it before. I'm walking in place. It's just flesh. It's just flesh. I'm like, God, what are you going to do? Come, Lord Jesus, Maranatha. It's so much flesh going on in the household of faith and the temple of God. People are seeing. We're getting ready to see separations where this is not of the seed of God. I'm going to know what is the seed of God because it has in it disciplines. It has restraint. Why you got to tell people off? Why you have no restraint? Do you have the blood? The blood restrains you. The blood has power. The blood has healing. You ain't got to keep asking people to heal. You get under the blood. And we're seeing people fall because they have things in their hearts that's unrepented of. And God is going all the way back. If this is the time of remembering to reward, to recompense, I'm remembering to reward you too. Because you was wicked and you did wrong. You changed your direction, but you didn't change your heart. And God is going into the heart. And he's saying, I still remember that you violated. There's blood on the crime scene way back here. And you never repented. You got up and cleaned it up and act like you did nothing. He he said if there's no repentance, if it did not come under the blood, it's what the enemy going to use to destroy you in this hour. It's God saying, judgment. I'm pulling fouls. Angels are walking with swords. He says, I'm about to open up things. 
He says, I'm about to cause things to be seen that's never been seen. You thought you got away, ain't nobody getting, tell your neighbor, say, nobody getting away with nothing. We in days of judgment. That's why you can hold your peace. You don't go back and forth with nobody. If you're in covenant and you under the blood, the Bible teaches us that he, he says he is the justifier. He is the just judge. He's the vindicator. These are God's people, not my people. Y'all not my people. You're my people as brothers and sisters in Christ. But I didn't get you here. I have no heaven or hell to put you in. And why do we get upset when people do things they shouldn't do? And we get so angry because we got stuff in us we don't want to deal with, but we want to regulate in other people. Do you know if you do wrong, you got to deal with the judgment in it, not me. But do you know if you do great, you're going to deal with your reward in it, not me. Why am I so in your life? He says, if you do right with people, he says, you're light. What's keeping you dim, what's making you remain a breach is that you've been sitting in conversations, getting seed thoughts from an enemy that's been causing you now to have an argument. Arguments are breaches. Disagreement are breaches. We got arguments in our soul. You know what the devil has built through AI? He created an intimate entity that he seeded thoughts of humanity because he said, I'm going to raise up of people. He, he, he's after the same thing. He said, watch and see if I don't get them. I'm going to deceive them with thoughts. And every time you get out there on social media, and we slinging mud, and he said, that's got it. That's another one coming to me. That's not your seed. I was able to lay down my seed in them. And I was able to see the thought that I saw or what I put in them is manifesting fruit because they are producing after my kind now. And that seed that he put in that entity, that AI is raising up now an argument through minds of technology that came from the thoughts of humanity. And he said, I'm going to tell you what humanity think about you. And he begins to see thoughts in us that we go on these uh, uh, banders and we just begin to say things. And now you identify that you are a breach. And where there is a breach in the wall, the enemy can come in and take out the camp. He says, when you identify a hole in the wall, it is for you to rise up and repair it. How do you repair it? You get in a prayer place. I got to go. But your mouth, what I was going to tell you guys, because when we start talking about breaches, why y'all here and we talking about travail, gathering, and praying, do you know that when you start studying out gates, portals, walls, doors, all of these things are what God is saying. It goes from gates and it becomes spiritual as a portal. Then we talk about portals, we got to deal with egress, which deals with how we transact business out of the heavens back into the earth. You are a gate. You are a gate. When you open up your mouth, and that's why your mouth is a gate. Why? Because it opens and closes. And he says, you're going to have what you say. We're in a decade of pay. So he says this, if you don't say nothing, then you're going to be the silly one that left your gates open. Why? Because he gave you power to bind and loose. So he says, when you open up your mouth prophetically, spiritually, here we go, spiritually, portals are those things you got to give access. He said, if you say it's legal to stay in your life, it's going to stay there. If you let it into the gates of your soul and you don't put it out, then what you've done, you've not mastered your own gates. You can't control your life. You can't control what you say. You can't control your emotions. That means there's a breach in the gate of your soul. And as you think it, you say it. As a man thinketh. So he says what is happening is that you are a part of, if you don't get your soul healed, you are a part of opening the breaches that is happening in the earth as prophetic agents who are learning how to bring prophetic prayers. Prophetic prayers are what, Pastor Cynthia? They are spiritual prayers. What are spiritual prayers? It's when you are praying what God said. Well, what did God say? Open up the Bible. The first word that came to you, he brought it down. It's called Logos. He said, since you can't ascend to me, I'm going to come down where you are. And I'm going to give apostles and prophets who can elevate in dimensions of the spirit. I'm going to tell them my thoughts. I don't care how much you get mad with us. I don't care how much you don't like. He says, but these people sacrifice. They are covenant people. I can trust them with my covenant. I can trust them with my government. I can trust them to come back in the earth, hold something for me that I can establish. Prophets announce, apostles establish. And so what we're understanding as you work together as team horses, you're able to create a stronghold. And why is stronghold important? Because d d d rulers and kings understood that if they can take the city, they came to create a stronghold. A stronghold is when you establish 
your rule. The devil begins to see thoughts in your mind, okay, that emotionally, come on, make you feel things that causes your will to submit to it. A three-way cord is not easily broken. Your mind, your emotions, and your will. If he can see and cause you to be entangled in how you think and what you feel and what you will to do, he just created a stronghold. You are locked down. And though you hear the word, you can't move out in it because you're entangled. You become now, your gates have been left open. He says, when you see, he said, cast down thoughts, vain imaginations. We're not doing it. He said, when the thought shows up that has the potential to break the breach of covenant you have with God, you should cast it down. It's, it's danger. Somebody is trying to do, um, you know, when people in other nations show up and they are with the um, they spies. They with the KGBs and all this stuff. There are people showing up in your life. And their position is to make sure they see the thought that makes you break a breach. And they are seeding thoughts to you that makes you think that wasn't your thought. You're hanging around people that seeding thoughts to you because somewhere emotionally you like how they make you feel. But they are covenant breaker. They don't come to prayer. They ain't interested in God like you. They don't pay their tithes. Y'all hear me? People tell me I don't pay your tithe. You better get some tithes going now because that's how you're going to get an exchange. This ain't coming from the earth. God's checking files. He's looking at what the exchange is in the heavens. Faith is an exchange currency out of the heavens. And when you don't, have, when you don't do what God says, then you are breaching. Let me finish. Father, I thank you. Stand to your feet. I got to go. Let me hold my tablet real quick. Open it up. I wrote some things that we're going to declare at the end. Shake it in my suya candidiaso. Shake it in. It's dangerous to give somebody like me. I'm very careful. You know, we have our own meetings and do stuff, and it's hard. Like for me, I be trying to figure out a lot of times what do I open? I got too much. Most people can't handle me long. I say most. And I'm not trying to be like I'm so... God poured something in me when I got saved. I didn't just have a regular come to the altar, give your life to Christ. I had, and I, the Lord came and visited me. I had visitations. So when the Lord came to visit me, I never forget this visitation. I just newly gotten saved and I was living, I'm going to get it. I was living in Maryland and I had left Hollywood and all this stuff. And I remember in this dream vision that the Lord came to me. And I was walking out of the front door. I went from dreaming in the state. You can have day visions and night visions. Dreams are very significant because it's another communication. And I was going, and you're awakened through dreams and visions, really, if you're a prophet or called into it. I was awakened. I was awakened. Okay. Is that? One, two. I was awakened. I was awakened. I was awakened. Let's stay here. I was awakened. I'm leaving. I was awakened in this dream vision. I was walking out the door. I was holding this bag of food in my hand. And my car had, was not working. And it was to me at that time. I, I had this little Porsche. I left everything. And my car had an engine problem. I had, the engine got messed up because I didn't put no oil in the engine because I didn't know. And so I was walking out the door. And when I got out the door, walking through the front door, this, this man came up to me and he had on a cloak and he walked up to me and I was crying because I didn't know what I was going to do. I was distraught because this is my only means of transportation. I'm in a dream, but this is what's really happening in my life. And I walk out and this man comes up to me like walk and he looks like a bum from the street. And he had this cloak on his head. I could never see his face because I was so distraught crying. He walks up to me and he said, can I have something to some food? And I was holding this food because I had just like gotten some food and it was in this bag and I was holding it and I was crying. He said, can I have some food? Like, we're going back to scripture to talk about covenant. And I went to give him the food. And when I went to give him the food, he said, I don't want the food. He said, I came to make an announcement. Follow me. And as I'm crying, he walking and I'm following him. And so every so often he looked back to see if I'm there. Now, when you come into spirit places, it doesn't seem like where it starts, where it ends. You're just going. I'm walking, and every so often he looks back till he gets to a place. He stops. He's not even where I am. I'm somewhere back here. He's up there where she is in that gold dress. When he stopped, I stopped automatically. 
And so when he turns around, he said, come no, come no further. He said, I came to announce to you the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. When he said his name, my knees hit the ground. It was automatic. It wasn't like, huh? Automatic. My knees hit the ground like that prophecy you was, how you had that visitation. But my knees hit the ground, and when my knees hit the ground, the next thing that appeared is an image of a man that I could see in, like, headlights. It was so bright. You ever seen the brightest headlights, and you can see an image of a body, but you couldn't see who the person was. It was an image in these headlights, and what he did, when I, when, when I hit the ground, he started walking to me. He was so far, but yet so close. He reached into something in the side of a pocket almost in him, and he took out this vial, and he said, open your mouth. And when I opened my mouth, he poured it into my mouth. And when he poured it into my mouth, I just started shaking. I shook for seven days after this visitation. I had no idea spiritually what was happening. I'm a brand new baby. I'm coming out of Hollywood. I don't been with the drug dealers. I, you know, I'm like, whoa. But I shook for seven days. And now I know that he poured his word in me. And I knew that he was saying then, you're going to be the one that carry my message. And though we all have been given opportunities and calls on our lives to be a part of that, there's he called to lead in some things. And so he gave me this assignment, and I've not wanted it. But I came to the place of stop being ignorant because I don't want to break a breach. I told God yes. And the reason why I keep saying yes, guys, is because I'm a covenant-keeping woman. Covenant is important, Sandy. And so let's say this. I got to. Said this to me. It's time to manifest the prophecy. It's time to pray prophetic prayers that provoke the Lord into your affairs with your words. You have a mantle to compel the stubborn forces of darkness, to give way and give up provisions of God that is stored in creation for what is needed for the people. So he said for us to come into this place and command with me. When I say it, you say it. When your sound and your mouth begins to release things in an atmosphere, your registered frequency causes every spirit to recognize they don't see you they hear the voice of God when you want things to be released at gates when you're manding you're only there because legislation take place at the gates all the officials of the city set at the gates so that's where the governments are right you probably know that but in kingdom it is our job to hold the stronghold for God and so one of the things we do is that when he starts taking it to the spirit from the natural, we understand portals, egress, entrance, extending. We see that, that, that whole illustration comes through Jacob. We see a good illustration of it, ascending and descending. So when you are saying things, your registered sound, the closer you are with him, you sound like him. Not like your favorite pastors. No mimic people. Get in a place where you can sound. I want to, me, 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 me. My, how do you, sha da 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 Your language and prayer begins to shift because your weapons are changing. When your language do not shift in prayer, you're not ascending. You should not be still praying, e ma 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 That's elementary. When you've graduated in a place in the spirit, the first thing tells you you have ascended is that you get an upgrade in your language. Because God begins to give you a download of what is needed in the spirit, like Jesus, to contend with the agents, the ruling powers, and principalities. When you're taking on Gates' assignment, you're dealing with principalities. That's why you got to become apostolic, not just an apostle. Apostolic people take. They overturn. They rule. They destroy, right? So why you have to become apostolic and chime in, me, 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 me come into this frequency of oneness is because one can put a fight a thousand two ten ten thousand we're warring against legions of demons of darkness and we're in a legal time where they're coming from everywhere 
So this is what we're going to say. Say, we command the rebellious agents of sin to release God provisions and dispensations to those that it has been assigned. And we declare, and we declare what has been rebuilt and repaired at our gates shall manifest now. Shall manifest now. Shall manifest now. Say, as I speak, the word of God, I disconnect, I dismantle every covenant contract with every other being that is not in the covenant agreement with God. Today, we declare that we call things back that have been robbed. We call things back that have been stolen. We say at our gates, we have everything we need to take our city, to take our state, to take our region, to take our nation, and establish our country. Today, we operate legitimately as God's covenant gatekeepers, and we declare that the gates have been rebuilt, that the hole has been filled, that the openings are closed according to our watch care assignments. We know that we win. We know that God is with us. We know that in this battle, we shall not lose in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Amen. Amen.